hello and welcome back to your art class. I hope that you are all well and had nice weeks and enjoyed last week's. Um, thank you so much for everyone who said that they enjoyed it. It's always so nice to hear your feedback. So you're always super welcome to DM me on Instagram, my Nestas, and um, fill me in on what you created. This week we have another lovely drawing. I mean, I think it's gonna be quite a nice one. We shall see, it's always an experiment as we know. Um, but all you need is your pen and your paper and then if you have colouring agents too then great. I'm going to try and be really strict to, to do about 10 minutes of the drawing stuff and then no more than like 35 minutes in total of the painting because last week was a little bit long and I had to speed some of it up so I hope that didn't bother you. Anyway, let's get going with today's drawing. Alright, I'm on my creaky little desk today again. <laughs> And I have my page. I hope that the lighting's okay. It's just natural light. So, um, fingers crossed that works for you. And we're gonna get started again. Let's do the border. So, I'm gonna do an interesting border. I'm gonna do a semicircle, and then a straight line, and then another semicircle, a straight line. This is random. You can do whatever your heart desires. Let's try and... I just, I'm getting a bit creative, you know, with my borders these days. Let's see if I can do it backwards or like on this side without turning my page. Maybe it'll create a slight wonk. It's mad, it's like, I feel like I'm drawing with my non-dominant hand when I do that stretch. <laughs> Kind of looks like a piece of Lego or something, doesn't it, this border, but that's fine. Okay, border is done. Boom. Then we're going to do basically like, we want to have a shape that comes across here and it can kind of be any style or design that you want. So what I might do is give myself the perimeter. So I'm thinking like a banana shape almost. So I'm going to do my edges one edge there and one edge here. And basically to join these two shapes up, I'm gonna come down a little bit here. This doesn't have to be the same shape as you, but imagining that I want this to be about the same width. Actually, do you know what? I'm just gonna do a circle. I'm just gonna do a circle or like an oval shape and I'm going to repeat that pattern but you could just literally draw a banana shape here it's up to you and kind of made it a little bit more complicated for myself but that's fine but do you see how I'm bringing the design up so that it meets my initial shapes And then I can just finish that one off there. Does not have to be perfect as always. So I've got like a little beaded banana kind of worm thing at the base there. Okay. Next up, and again, you don't have to follow me exactly, but we're going to start by having a shape in the middle, which comes to about there on your page, about here. And it's going to start, like get wider as it comes down. So I'm going to start it like here and here and then it's going to end up here in a uh, semicircle. But to get there I can do any shape I want. So I could do like a wobbly line or I could do a straight line. I think I'll do kind of line that comes out a little bit and in. And then I'm going to mirror that so I would recommend mirror it, mirroring it. <laughs> Can't say that word. So we have like a, a shaft of some sort. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like the same shape as this though, sorry, I'm being silly. Okay, now I wanna do two more on each side, but they're kind of tucked behind it. So I don't want it to go over this shape here. So the, the, the far, farthest or furthest that I want it to go is to about there and to about there. So I have my perimeters in place, which makes it a bit easier. 
and I don't really want it to go, um, well, I suppose it could go lower, but not much lower than this. This is kind of like the lowest point. I'm almost mimicking this shape, but I do want it to come in a little bit. All of these riddles. So let's do the outside one. So I want this one to come in, basically, so that the end point isn't at the same uh, like width from the border. It's in a little bit, if that makes sense. And now I'm rethinking my shape. <laughs> I would suggest to do them all uniform the same, but I think I'm going to do the outside ones a little bit different. So I'm going to end it here. And I'm going to just add a slight wiggly line. Maybe watch and see what this is before you do yours. <laughs> and then I'm going to do another one where the shape ends here and starts about in the middle. Although this is probably going to be the thickest one. And again, I'm going to do the wiggle, but I'm going to do it slightly less. And then you can just finish off that shape by bringing it down to wherever it hits. And then I'm going to flip it and do the same thing on the other side. So let's, it's actually kind of helpful to have your ending point here. Go from the top this time. And then another one in the middle there. Trying to make that one a little bit softer. There we go. And I'll just join those up there as well. So we've got kind of like a crown or like a head piece look going on, but that isn't what this is. We're going to now add something to the top here. So you could add just like a little blob or what I'm going to add is this. It's like a circle. In the middle, leaving a bit of space, a little U shape, and then a little stalk that comes out, which is a little cherry. And then underneath my cherry, I'm going to do the suggestion of a little blob of cream. I mean, I don't know, just wobbly lines, I suppose. It's a cherry on top of your dessert. So I'm going to crown this, maybe add a few little suggestions that there are more columns coming behind, just the little tips. And you can see there, if I bring it up. Now this could be you can now take it wherever you want to. So in my head, I was thinking it was like jelly, like a tower of jelly or jello. I don't know. Do Americans call it jello? Uh, jelly in the UK, where it's a little bit wobbly. So this is why I was like, you could do different shapes with this. And also you can mold jelly into different shapes. So sometimes they have like really elaborate forms, but this is quite a simple one. But I thought maybe it just got knocked on the side. So it's wobbling a little bit. So in order to show that, you can also do like um, these kind of wobble lines, you know, how they do in like cartoons and stuff. And already it gives it a little bit of uh, movement going on, kind of just randomly. Or this could not be jello or jelly. <laughs> I like actually jello. It could be a cake and you could um, design it with however you wanted to, with like um, icing, piping, whatever. This is going to be my dish, my tray that it's on, and I'm gonna add a small uh, foot here too, but you could also have this as a plate, and not if you haven't got room, you could have just like garnishes down here. This design, I must say, is inspired by a Pinterest picture. Um, I didn't come up with this design. I mean, I've kind of gone off um, uh, the like actual drawing a little bit, but it is from Pinterest, so I can't claim any um, 
creative rights over this design, but we're just getting inspiration. And that's my little foot. In theory, if I thought about it, <laughs> it would curve alongside this, but whatever. We go for a random perspective, don't we? Maybe I'll add like feet coming out the back to show that it's stable. Again, not perfect, but that's fine. And now it's all about decoration. So obviously we do need to ground it because it's still just floating in the middle of, of nowhere. So in the illustration, there's a line that comes across here to suggest a table, but I think I'm gonna put my line a little bit further back. So maybe like here. And I've learned now from last week that uh, I don't need to go too elaborate with these designs because yeah, about 10 minutes of drawing is perfect, I think. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of, um, I don't know, embellishment and then we're gonna start painting. But what embellishments could I use? Sometimes just having like, um, squiggles or like marks you know like adding a pattern can make a more interesting design i know i'm gonna lose my little jelly marks here but i have them up there so that's fine i will get confused with these and i could paint them my little artist heart is wanting to do like really detailed <laughs> design on this but maybe I I won't I won't nest don't do it and just add a little bit of something here maybe I'll add a stripe design on this foot that will make me satisfied and the sun's just appeared <gasps> is it gonna be a sunny day Berlin that would be nice. It was a rainy grey day yesterday. Oh yeah, that's cool. I like that. I'm going to do more of that. Um, it makes just such a difference, doesn't it? When the sun decides to come out after so long being away. Spring is coming. We're all very excited. Um, and then mm, I'll do horizontal lines. And I'll use the horizontal lines to show the perspective a little bit. You see? This is me just ad-libbing though. You do not have to do this. Like that. See how I've curved it there in the middle? It gives it a little bit more depth. Maybe I'll add the stripes onto this to make it funky and then we can... Uh, get on with it so how would I do that though again just kind of curving my lines as they go around the balls maybe you have um, a very different design and so again just play patterns dots random stars or you could play also with just the paint or the colouring agent that you've got. Um, so it's kind of a weird perspective now. <laughs> but that's fine. That's making me feel like it's a weekend thing, isn't it? This big posh dessert. Or like a special occasion. We feel like weekend even though it's only Wednesday. Right, I like that. It's grounded it. There's like stuff going on here. You could also add a background. Um, I'm gonna add a little ch bit of uh, shine on my cherry. And... Mm, maybe I'll just add some kind of wobbly lines because I feel like this is a little bit plain for me. Although plain is also good sometimes, you know. 
Don't always need to make it elaborate, but yeah, that, that works. And maybe I'll add an extra wobble mark here. Like that. And then you could do something fun with the background, but I think I'll leave it to do with the paint. All right, that's our design. I'm trying to be controlled in my designing. Got my paints, got my big brush and my water. Let's get you in shot. Two pots, because I'm lazy. And I'm gonna start by painting the jelly. So I'm not going to use, I'm gonna do a red jelly. Red strawberry, add a little bit of my alizarin crimson there and my scarlet red. And let's go for it. Need a bit more water on my brush because I want it to be not that vibrant because I'm going to do a few layers. I say it and then I'm like, actually, <laughs> let's load up that brush. I'm still getting used to this brush, even though last week I was like, I need to practice. Did I practice with this brush? No. <laughs> Went back to my old brush. Don't believe everything you hear on the internet. It <laughs> is all a lie. So I'm thinking of like kind of crazy colors because I'm loving this uh, stripy foot holder thing. I'm thinking maybe like reds and purples. I'm avoiding the green, remember, because it does funky things on the <laughs> on the camera for some reason. I'm just thinking speed. We're not going for perfection. We are going for speed, getting that creative hit. but you could definitely take your time with this. This could also be a really nice birthday card or something like that. Reloading all the time. I think the thing with this brush is it's really soft compared, it's like a little bit softer than the than my usual brush as well and bigger. So it's floppy. So when I go to paint with it, just thinking for you, if you're going to buy a brush, um, sometimes a softer brush is harder because it's like super floppy, which is great for some techniques and some styles of painting. But if you like a little bit more control, sometimes getting a slightly more snappy brush is quite useful. That's what I'm realizing now. I mean, I always knew it, but it's like when you're in the heat of the moment, you're like, why do I have no control? That could be why. Your brush is too soft for your style of work. But I won't give up on it, I'm gonna continue to use it. You will see me struggle with it every week. <laughs> Don't worry. See how I'm just layering over the first layer? I'm being a bit naughty because it's still quite wet, so I could also just be lifting the previous layer, but because I'm going in with quite a lot of pigment on my brush, it's I'm getting away with it. And because the first round of paint wasn't too wet as well. So just going in there. I realise that my cherry is also going to be red, but maybe I'll make it a slightly more purpley red. And I'll come in just on the top here with a nice dense bit of red pigment. And I'll keep that cream nice and white. I might add in um, like a shadow at some point 
to just bring it to life a little bit. Otherwise, job done. Wow, I, I could do more, but Ness, I'm gonna stop. Because <laughs> last week I ended up having to speed up quite a lot of the video and um, I don't really wanna have to do that. I want it to be real, you know? So then let's think about our color palette. So we could do like a real red affair, purples and reds with like a orange, uh, border. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we're going for the purple. We know that the purple is very vibrant. I'm going to do this purple, but I still want to see the design, so I'm not going to do it too, um, pigmented. She says, and then loads it up so you can't see. And I've also got to be a bit careful that the red isn't still wet because we know that the purple will go into it. But it seems everything seems to be drying quite quickly today. I'm not using that much water, so that's good. Just dragging this across. It actually looks quite good when there's not too much paint because then it gives that kind of illusion of light hitting these balls or whatever round bits cougars I know that's not probably how you do it. probably not how you say it in German Yeah, I don't mind this kind of look. I might even steal some pigment from these guys so that they look a little bit more shiny. Drag this down and then I can add a little bit more pigment down here. Like so. Just like not worrying too much about it being patchy because you know that's what we're about here imperfection. Bring that up a little bit. Could play with that for a little while. I kind of like how it's doing its own thing though. Lift out some of that colour as well. Okay, move on Ness, move on. So now we want to do background. Background up here. We were gonna do orange. Let's just go for it. What did we use last week? We used yellow, red, or pink, and purple. So it's kind of the same thing. I'm gonna do not thinking about it too much. A nice cadmium orange background up here. You see how I'm just slapping it on. Quite a lot of water going on. I like that. We want it to be uh, wet on wet look. Just drag it around. Nice. 
satisfying just painting a big bit of page where you don't have to worry too much just around the edges of course but you just like well yeah let that paint do its thing letting the paint speak for itself So this cadmium orange is pretty powy when you give it a chance, it will definitely infiltrate the space. It's not shy. And watermark wise, I wonder if it's going to give me some nice drawing marks or drawing lines. It's got some interesting stuff going on here, so I don't, I don't love that. <laughs> I'm like, give me the drying marks, and then it gives it to me, and I'm like, no. <laughs> Can't win with me, I'm afraid. Paint will never be satisfied with what you're giving me. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I often think like, okay, when I'm painting, this is the thing, it takes you to like this meditative state and then you just end up chatting rubbish. Um, and, and I was like, what, what's her deal? But it's all part of it, isn't it? I like that. I'm not sure about the combination. Maybe I need to add a bit of um, orange onto the jello. Let's give it a bit of depth, shall we? as I always say and it, yeah it kind of just brings it into the background a little bit and just being very quick and slapdash I don't want to lift any of the red that I've already applied so I have to be a bit careful with like how much paint I have on my brush how wet or how dry my brush is because if my brush is a little bit too dry here then it will kind of like niggle into the paint and make it patchy like lift off random patchy bits and if it's too wet it will just flood it and then as it dries it will kind of lift the red underneath so you're getting a, a little um experimental amount of water or a little feel for the amount of water that you need but do you see how that has just kind of given a bit of harmony to the colours? Because before it was very like red and orange and now it's kind of like a warmth going on. Sorry, that make a little uh, sound with my palette. Okay, down here, colour-wise, I still like the purple, but I might go for a really light wash of purple just here doesn't look light right now but I'm going to add water I'm trying not to go onto the border but sometimes it happens you know Be nice if this is a slightly different shade of purple actually as I'm applying it that's what I'm realizing but uh, what would I mix with it I think what I'll do instead is I'll go over the the foot with a another layer of something to just differentiate it a little bit a bit fiddly down here Looks okay. And 
hear my neighbours doing a bit of door banging. I don't know if you can hear that. But that's what that noise is in case you can hear. Random bangs. It's all part of city life, in it? Don't mind it. Okay, there we have that. And actually we need more red going on. So maybe the border will be a red instead of uh, an orange. But I'm gonna just get a bit more, oh, there's a bit of blue down here too. I'll add in a bit of blue to my purple. So it's still purpley and just cusp these I might oh might even just leave it like this a little kind of um purposeful brush stroke give it a bit more something something Like that. Is that good? Yeah, that'll do. Cherry on top. I'm going to actually use this purple because I wanted to give a purpley red, didn't I? Try and not hit the gloss mark. Gonna clean it off a little bit, actually get a little bit of this blue, dab it off and then just go into the creamy bit with the promised shadows. I'll show you a close up and then. Get my red, ready pink and go in while it's still wet because whatever, I don't mind if it's just one layer. That's kind of cute. Let's show you up close as it dries. You see, it looks a little bit messy now, but once it's dried, it will look better. And let's continue with this color very quickly to do the border and then we are done for today. Two minutes, time flies. Time just absolutely flies. See, I always regret, <laughs> I always regret doing these elaborate borders, but I think it does add something. Well, it adds a massive thing to the picture actually, having these elaborate borders, even just a straight up and down border just frames the picture nicely. Um, just looking at the Pinterest image that I have looked at and yeah, they've outlined it just with a black line. And I am gonna just spin it around so that it's quick for me to finish. You see I've got last week's flower up here unfortunately on its way out. But I've got to say those those flowers lasted a really long time, like over a week of looking really nice and only now are they starting to be a bit sad. Supermarket flowers. I think they were like two euro something. Bargain. Well good. Made me happy all week. I'm going up the lines a little bit and this orange is a little bit wet so it's bleeding into it slightly so I'm being very naughty, I should really wait. Oh, I'm going off, off the camera as well. What's going on? I'm nearly there. 
This is where, like I say, having it on a block is good because it stays stuck. If you did this on loose paper, the edges would start to curl in probably. Maybe it'd be a lot harder. But as I said last week as well, you can always use tape to tape your page down. Okie dokie, there we go. I think we're going to leave it there for today. If I was to carry on with it, I would add just more um, like shadow, more shading, and maybe like a fun design, like a little, actually, you know what? I really want to do that. So Ness, I'm just going to do it. Maybe I could speed up. Just really, I think that's gonna really make, <laughs> really, really gonna make a difference to just add a fun bit of texture here as well, you see? It's just the simple little marks. Anyone can make these kinds of marks, you just, even do it with a pencil, colouring pencil, whatever. Yeah. Love! Okay, we're leaving it there. There we have. <laughs> I always say that, I know, but there we have our lovely drawing for today. I'm pretty happy with it. I love the last little addition of the um, grains of jello, whatever it is in there. Uh, I think that really made it pop. It just goes to show that when you add just like tiny little last minute things, it can just turn your painting or drawing from like, fine, yeah, I like it, to like, oh yeah, I really like it now. So all these little, little tricks that you can do. Um, I would continue working on this. If I was going to design this for like an actual card or print or something like that, I would probably add a little bit more embellishment. But for today's activity, I think it's come out really nicely and I'm really happy with it. It's making me want to eat jelly. I don't think I've eaten jelly for like, I'm, I can't even remember, as a child. And yeah, I'll be here again next week with another nice drawing. I hope that you have lovely weeks. Take care of yourselves and I will see you then. Bye.